Hey guys, welcome to my next C-Sharp beginner tutorial and this is going to be part 3 and we're going to be looking at if statements and or what we call conditional statements so if you do one thing uh, or if you reach a particular sort of condition we might do one thing, we might do another or we might do something else and now this is very important with doing a lot of things in games where you need to check say every frame and you need to do it constantly within your game because you need to check if you've found a key, if you've reached a particular value, if you've reached a particular score and then you might complete the game, you might um, lose the game. It's you know very dependent on what type of game you're creating and what you want to make. So I will go into the sort of basics of doing it because once you have this you can really, you can do a, a hell of a lot of things with it. So what we'll do is we'll create a new C Sharp script and we'll call this conditional then we'll open up in mono develop and now when we're in mono develop like I always um, show you like to do is I'll just move this curly bracket down and I will get rid of the two all the sort of information within the two beginning curly brackets so then we can start from the fresh so now we're gonna start writing our script so first of all more often than not is that you can use an if statement anywhere it doesn't have to be in a update method but that's the most common place probably to actually put it but I'll show you a few examples as I go along so we'll start by writing void update then we we'll have two brackets and then below there we'll have two curly brackets and if you've seen um, in the previous video you always need a left and a right facing curly bracket to encapsulate everything and I like to just format my code like this to make it nice and manageable so I'll go through the sort of the very basic types of conditional statements that we'll use within well I use in programming so we'll have if else if and else and these are pretty much they do a similar thing but they all do it in a slightly different way if I give a brief example is that if you start with an if statement you're saying that if you are and you give it a particular condition so if we've reached a particular score then we'll do something if you've put an else if after your first if statement it will say it will run through the code in execution order line by line and say if our score is a hundred do something if say we've got an else if after it and it says else if score is 50 then we can do something else because unless it meets a particular conditional statement it will move on to the next one and else is just a nice one to end it so say if you've got several if statements all the way down here saying if it's 150 or whatever else else statement can just say if it isn't any of the things that you've already done do this so it could just mean if you if your score is not 100 then you can just have an else statement and say that if it isn't any of the stuff above do that but I'll go into this more thoroughly as we go along so we'll start by doing this so we'll say that if and we'll start by writing score is and we can set equal equal to 50 then we can close that bracket up and add two curly brackets in below there and like I say I like to keep them below each other to make it apparent and now we'll start by writing our variable so we'll start by we'll make it a public variable and we will make it an integer and we will call this score just like we had there and add a semicolon so what this is saying is that if score is equal to 50 and a double equals just means that if it's directly equal to that then we can say debug dot log open brackets in quotes then we can write score is 50 and if you see my other video you'll see that debug dot log just pops it up in the reporter at the bottom so that's all well and good so all it's saying this will check 30 so if you're it's really FPS dependent so if you're running at 30 frames per second it's going to be checked 30 times every second so it'll say it'll check if the score is equal to 50 then it'll do this then what we could do is we could say that if 
score is then equal to, say, 40, we could do something else. And again, I will have the if statements, and then I'll have my um, statement that I want to check within two normal brackets, and then two curly brackets below. And then we can pretty much do the same thing. And say that debug.log, now your score is equal to 40. And say we test this in our game, I go to my first person controller, I add my conditional script there, you can see that score is equal to zero, you can see that there's nothing appeared at the bottom down here. Now my score, when it is equal to zero, it does nothing. Now if I set my score to 50, press enter, you can see that score is 50, and you can see that because it's in the update function, it's given me this report every single 30 times every second. So it's telling me, yeah, we've got to 50. We can do that. Now, if I set that to 40, you will notice that score is now equal to 40. And we're just checking each time that it does something. But it's better not to use a debug line for something like that. You'll want to set a, a, a win parameter, let's say, and so you can move to another scene if you reach a particular score or have a new objective. Now, another way we could do it is that we could say if score is equal to 50, we can do that. Then we can change this if statement to an else if statement. And what that means is that it's either if it's this or else if, and else if is just slightly more refined in terms of the programming behind it, and it will match itself to the, the conditional statement above. Because if we just had lots and lots of if statements, that's slightly slower than having the else if according to the first one. And let's, for instance, then we can below here, I will show you the else statement, else. And we don't actually need to write anything within brackets for an else statement. So what we can do is just put the two curly brackets below again. And we'll say else. Now we'll say debug.log and score is let's say zero for instance so if it's not 50 and it's not 40 it will do this so once we start our game we expect to see that it reports that score is zero because we're not matching any of the two conditionals now if we have it 50 score is now 50 if we set it to 40 score is now 40 and we can stop that running and go back into here and like I said you can do it in any other type of function so like I showed in a particular in the other tutorial you can say void on trigger enter collider other then two brackets below and then we can say that if like I mentioned in the other tutorial other dot compare tag in brackets player close that up see we're doing an actual statement here and we're saying that if the collider we're running into finds this player then we will do whatever is in between the curly brackets so we're saying that if it is and finds the player we'll do this and it's just a way to um, refine your amount of coding and to make it so that you can only do a certain amount of things when you want to so you can do it in your own functions you can do it in the on trigger you could even have another if statement here and then you could start writing and managing variables and checking that if you've hit this player and you're a particular variable value, then you can achieve something. So I'll give you an example, is that if score is 50, let's say, and then in here we can write an and and, which means do this and something else. We can say and and, let's say you've, well, so we call this checkpoint. So you've hit the checkpoint, we're going to need to create another variable, so we'll say public bool as type checkpoint. So what this is saying, that if the score is equal to 50, and checkpoint equals true, because checkpoint, if I give it the 
proper name here it will just be equal to true now if I do something different and say and and if I put an exclamation mark it will do the opposite to a true value it will say if it's false and we're equal to 40 then we'll do something else so now I'll go back and in my script it will update and checkpoint will appear now if I press play I look at the bottom you can see it's zero because we've not reached any of the conditionals if I type in 40 you can see that from my script is that if checkpoint is false and we reach 40 will display the score is 40 because it's currently unticked which means it's false now if I put 50 in the box you'll notice that because the score isn't equal to 50 and checkpoint is true it isn't equal to 40 and the checkpoint isn't false it's something else so it's displaying that score is zero now if I press true it will say that the score is now equal to 50 so like I've been saying you can manage any amount of things with doing these if statements so they're just really checking whatever you need to check so if is always the thing that you want to start with if you're having an if and l and want to check other things specific to the first if statement use else if else if you want to check if it's not equal to anything of the above then do that and you can use it in trigger events you can also use an if statement within a statement itself so say I get rid of the score equal to 50 and I say within this if statement if score is equal to 50 and let's remove this checkpoint then I can say within the statement itself then if checkpoint is true and that's this is pretty much doing the same thing as we did up here but we're saying that if this is true then check this so what it's doing something something sort of slightly shorter so if it doesn't reach this it will never um, execute these lines of code so what again it's saying that we're just doing it a slightly different way if score is 50 then it will say that if checkpoint is now true then it will do this but if that one is never reached it will move on and move on and it will do exactly the same thing and like I said you could even do it in here then you'll say that else if you could say something else checkpoint so if checkpoint equals true and and then you could do something else like you've hit checkpoint 2 and then you could have something else here and you need to create yourself a new variable so like I said you can have the if statement and then an else if and you could even use another else statement as well but it really is it might seem a little bit complicated but it takes a lot of practice on your part to just look at everything that you're creating look at how you want it to be set out and how you want it to work and then think to yourself how is the best way that I can use this so hopefully this uh, cleared up some things and helps you move on with the sort of next part of games programming in C Sharp so thanks very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers